I hear these words coming out of Job's mouth. And we all know where Job is, right? In this, when he's, he's lamenting. He's, he's actually, you know, asking, why do I have to live? Why should I live? He's, he's lost everything. He's lost his cattle, his sheep, all of his, his house blew down. Um, his, all of his children, dead, gone. Um, his wife is still okay. Everyone else is gone. He himself, <clears throat> at this point, he's covered in boils, he's terrible afflictions, physical afflictions. He's sitting on the ash heap, uh, scraping himself with a piece of broken poetry or pottery. And it's like, the man's depressed. That's plain and simple. The man is depressed. And not without reason, obviously, with good reason. But so, why do we even have this story? Why, why would we even want to talk about it? Why would we want to talk about depression in church? It seems like this should be the place where we come and, and talk about uplifting, happy things, right? And, and it is, but it is also true that um, a very, very large percentage of the population today suffer from depression. Um, it may not sound like a lot, but 10% of the population in the last year has had a major depressive episode. One that impeded their ability to do their, do their daily living, to get up and go to, go to work or go to school or just to get out of bed in the morning. 10% of the population, that, that's a lot of people. That's like uh, somewhere around 21 million people have been affected by depression just in, the, in, in one year. And that number has grown dramatically since COVID with the isolation and the fear and not, not just the COVID, but just everything that was going on around it too um, it has made it a hard time for people. And so people have been having trouble. Um, chances are that if you are not currently depressed yourself, you know somebody that is. In fact, I can guarantee you know somebody who is struggling with depression at this very moment. There, there are people in this church right now who are struggling with depression. I can say that with confidence because that's everywhere, anywhere you go. Um, so I guess one thing to know is that if you are <clears throat> struggling with depression or you know someone that is struggling with depression, the first thing to know is you're not alone. You're never alone. Um, that one of the most debilitating symptoms of depression, one of the most debilitating parts of depression is hopelessness. It's that overwhelming sense of hopelessness. I know, you know, I've had people come in to talk to me uh, for counseling in my office. They come in and they tell me, you know, the, what their situation is. And I'll say, well, have you thought of this? Oh, well, that won't work. Have you thought of this? Well, you know, that won't work. It's because they're just overwhelmed. And they're, they're, at that point, it's hard to imagine that anything could help or anything would be better. Um, you know, it's uh, in that scripture we read, he said, when it's time to eat, all I can do is sigh with sadness, not joy. My groans pour out like water. I'm afraid something terrible will happen. I can't calm down or relax. I'm too upset to rest. Anyone who ever, who's ever dealt with depression can relate to what Job is saying right there, to how he's feeling. I think we've all had those feelings to some degree or another at some point in our life where that terrible sense of hopelessness the, that turns a, just the simple task of getting out of bed and getting dressed in the morning into an overwhelming burden. 
But the good news is this. The good news is God has a prescription for that. God has a prescription for depression. And as simple as it may sound, it sounds totally simplistic, the cure for hopelessness is hope. I know that sounds circular and, and simple, but it really is true. The, the cure for hopelessness is hope. And hope comes, hope comes from knowing that no matter how dark the moment may seem now, no matter how dark the moment, the light is never far away. Today, it, it, you may feel like just it's hopeless, it's dark, everything's falling in on me. But the light is right around the corner. <clears throat> As the psalmist writes, weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Meaning, emotions are not permanent. That's so important for us to, to understand that how I'm feeling in this moment will change. It will change. It's not permanent. Um, emotions come and they go. It's like the waves on the sea. Sometimes they're rough. Sometimes not so rough, but always moving, always going. They're like the wind. You know, the wind can go from this... Sometimes it's just this little gentle breeze coming out of the east, the one that warms the earth and makes the flowers bloom. Uh, and sometimes it can become a roaring gale, destroying everything in its path. One day it blows from the east, the next from the west. You know, it's just ever-changing. And that's how our emotions are. No matter how hopeless it may feel now, the light is near. You could take the prophet Elijah. He's a really good example. The prophet Elijah <clears throat> was at the top of his game. He went up against all these pro prophets of Baal. And, you know, they had this big prophet contest. Who could, who could call down fire from heaven? And, you know, the prophets of Baal, they did all their magic and they danced around and they did all kinds of stuff and they had some sacrifices and nothing happened. And Elijah said, yeah, guys, watch this. Oh, wait, no, this is too easy. Pour water all over the wood. Better yet, dig a trench and fill it with water. Get that everything soaked. And then he just like, hey, God, boom, there's fire, right? He, he was... Like, there's nothing better for a prophet than that. He defeated all 400 of the prophets of Baal. And then the next day, where is he? The next day, he's hiding in the desert. He's run away because, uh, you know, Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you. And he ran away. And, um, and he's, you know, and he's saying, here's what it says. It says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. And he asked God that he might die. Is it enough now, Lord? Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. One minute he's like up here, and the next minute he's wanting to die. Um, whatever you're going through, you're going through it. It's changing. Uh, and just as surely as night is followed by day, light follows darkness. You know, speaking into the, the hopelessness of the exiles in Babylon, Jeremiah, speaking for God, says, I know I have the plans for you. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for your harm. To give you a future with hope. God's plan for you is bright. God's plan is 
for you to have a future with hope. The whole book of Revelation has one message. Hang in there. No matter what happens, no matter what happens now, it will get better. And in the end, God wins. Always. In the end, God wins. With God, there is always hope. And as Paul writes, hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. And that's the second part of the, of the prescription. First, whatever you're going through, you're going through it. It's only temporary. And the second is you are never alone. You are not going through, through this Alone, God is always with you. No matter where you are, no matter what's happening, God is always with you. Again, the psalmist writes, If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you, God. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. God is equally present in the darkest moment and in the lightest moment of your life. God is with you. God simply is not afraid of the dark. God penetrates the darkest corners of our minds and, and our souls and washes us with this kind of unending grace, this love that God has that is absolutely unconditional. He co comes right into the very darkness of our lives, in the, the place of our despair, and sheds light. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light that John was talking about when he said, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. The darkness will never overcome it. You know, if you or someone that you care about is suffering from depression, the first thing you need to know is that the God who called light out of darkness and created order out of chaos has a plan for you. The God who spoke and brought light into darkness has a plan for you. You are not alone. You are never alone. And you are infinitely important to God. Infinitely important. Matthew 20, 10, 29 through 31 says, you can buy two sparrows for only a copper coin. And yet, not even one sparrow falls from the nest without the knowledge of our Father. Aren't you worth more much more to God than many sparrows. So don't worry, for your father cares deeply about even the smallest detail of your life. God's <clears throat> prescription for depression is hope. And hope is found in the certain knowledge that the God who created all things has your best interest at heart. God loves you. God wants the best for you. That doesn't mean you're not going to go through some stuff. Because you are. We all know that. We all know that. We all know that life happens. We go through some stuff. But those of us who have lived long enough also know that you come out on the other side. You know? I remember when my oldest daughter was born, we had planned that she would be born in this birthing clinic, and we had paid money to this birthing clinic and had it all taken care of and ready to go. And my daughter decided to get be born at the same time the doctor at that clinic decided it was time for a vacation. <laughs> and so we ended up, we, we had to go to the hospital for the birth. And I got the bill from the hospital, and you're going to laugh at this because this was, you know, 44 years ago uh, or something like that. I got the bill from the hospital. It was $2,500. And I thought my life was over. I did. 
I, how could I, how, I worked for five bucks an hour, you know, pouring concrete. How am I ever going to pay off a $2,500 debt? I laugh at that now. I mean, I wish I only had $2,500 in debt. Um, that'd be pretty cool. Not have a mortgage, not have a car payment. Uh, but at that time, in that moment, that seemed overwhelming to me. It seemed like, wow, how can I ever do this? You know, I was 23 years old. And, um, but that passed. And now I, I, now I look back and laugh. And, and that, that's a good reminder for me. I think it's a good reminder for all of us that things can seem overwhelming in the moment, but once you're past it and you're on the other side of it and you look back, you can say, well, why was I so upset? Uh, that's not to make light of anybody's problems or anybody's troubles because they're real and our, re our reactions are real. But whatever you're going through, God's with you, and the light is never far away, and the darkest hour will soon give way to day. The darkest night always passes. That's all. Just, just remember, that's God's prescription for depression, is simply hope. Hope for tomorrow. Amen.